Today I'll be making a motor mount out of a three millimeter thick aluminum stock from uh, Home Depot. It'll be about 120 millimeters long. If you have a cutoff saw for cutting metal, that would be that would work great. But I don't have one of those, so I have a miter box that I usually use for cutting wood and a hacksaw. And you notice the sharp edges here. You take sandpaper and sand the sharp edges down so you don't get cut on them. And you can find the center of your uh, piece right here, so it's five five centimeters wide, so two and a half centimeters. Put the motor mount about one centimeter down from the top. So now you can align your motor mount halfway, the circle halfway on there, and then the holes will be on this one centimeter uh, line. Draw your holes that you'll be drilling. To find the center of this circle right here, what I'm going to do is take my little square here, triangle, go from hole to hole, and draw an X there, go from this side to this side, draw an X there. Now you know where to put your center punch. It'll make a little divot right there for your drill bit so it doesn't skip all over. Do the same for the mounting holes. So now you got your four mounting holes here and your center hole that you will be drilling out for the back of your motor. It just has to be big enough to allow this uh, bushing to go in. When you're drilling you want to spray it with some WD-40 or liquid wrench just to uh, lubricate the, the bit. flip it over and drill this out to get rid of these burrs on the other side. Using a multi-step bit like this one, it will make a very nice clean hole. You see how these are beveled on the edges. So you just line it up and barely touch the, uh, the hole with the next step of the drill bit. See the holes are nice and beveled. I always vacuum between each drilling to prevent uh, shavings from getting underneath because if shavings are underneath then your piece is going to sit crooked and it's going to drill weird. Now for the center piece. Put a little bit more.
So you see now that the uh, hole for the motor is bigger than what is required. Give you a little bit of slack. In order to bend the metal, especially something that as thick as three three millimeters, you need to know the radius of your arc because it's not going to be a sharp 90 degree bend like thin metals like a one millimeter bend so I found a bend calculator online you select up here the hardness of your metal soft copper medium hard soft steel aluminum or you know hard steel one eighth inch and then the inside radius will also be a one eighth inch and I want to bend it at 90 degrees. What this tells me is I need to add one quarter of an inch or a little over one quarter of an inch to my project to account for the bend radius for this. The outside radius of my bend will be like a quarter of an inch or more. Quarter inch down from the bottom of the motor mount is going to be the beginning of the line. The dash line will be the middle of the bend and this will be the end of the bend. So I'm going to make try to make the bend about a half inch. But I'm going to drill a hole in the middle of this to weaken it so it, it is easier to bend. I have a larger step bit here so it'll be bigger than this one. And you'll see here it has burrs on the underside of it, so we have to flip it over and just touch it with the uh, step bit and it'll take that burr right off. So you can see now there's a hole where you will be bending it so it'll make it a lot easier to bend. Since this is kind of sharp, I'll uh, go over it with a step bit and just round off the edges. Now you see all the uh, edges are nice and rounded, beveled, no sharp edges on it. Now I will show you how to bend this thick three millimeter aluminum without cracking it. Something as thick as three millimeter uh, aluminum will crack when you bend it. So there's a special process that you have to do to heat this up to a specific temperature. But to find that temperature you have to do candle, using a candle. Just a regular household candle. Let your candle get up and going and uh, get a pair of pliers because this aluminum will get very hot. You have a pair of regular just pliers that you can hang on to your piece of metal with. What you need to do is get black soot from the candle all over your aluminum, at least where you're bending it. This, this will be your um, heat gauge basically. And if your flame is not big enough, then you need to move your candle around and get the wax out of the way so it burns the wick rather than the wax, and that's where your black soot comes from. Also, it helps to uh, get a little bit of wax on your uh, aluminum when the entire piece will heat up, and then you can get um, a wax on your piece of aluminum. And that's also a good indicator. You see how black it is right there, and you can uh, flip it around and do the other side. You don't have to blacken the entire piece of aluminum, but just where you will be bending it. The entire piece will heat up eventually, but uh, uh, you only need to get soot where you're going to be bending it.
around that area because when the wax starts to turn brown and then it disappears and the soot disappears that's a great indication that your aluminum is up to temperature and it's ready to be bent see the soot and the wax all over the place. So before you start heating have your vise ready and it helps to have a pair of metal working pliers. I bought these from Harbor Freight for a couple bucks. Take a propane torch or acetylene torch and heat your piece up. You see how the where the flame hits the metal it's not glowing one thing with aluminum is it does not glow red hot like iron or steel it will only glow where the flame is it's kind of weird it doesn't act like regular uh, regular metal and you'll see a, a, a light orange or yellowish glow when the metal gets up to temperature. You'll also see the soot and the wax disappear. And you can see how this looks like uh, frost melting. I don't know if this is a covering on there or the wax burning off or what, but you can see it spreading. That means it's getting up to temperature. And the wax will turn brown and that soot and the brown will disappear almost at the same time. Almost instantly this stuff will just vaporize and you'll have clean aluminum. It's very weird but that's the temperature to remove the tension inside the aluminum in order to bend it. And the soot is starting to disappear. The brown is starting to disappear meaning it's getting almost to about 600 degrees right here. Your pliers will get a little bit hot, so you got to watch out for that. Wear leather gloves if you have them. And you'll see this. Look at this. Okay, and there it's starting to get really hot. And you'll see this uh, brown and black soot just disappear. Same thing with this side. Heat both sides. see that how this just almost instantly disappears when the flame hits it it's already at that temperature where every all the impurities on the surface just burn right off and you see the surface changing to a kind of a, a orangish glow see where the flame is hitting and is turning orange that is what you want okay that is See where the flame is orange, where it's hitting the metal. That is exactly what you want. But this is, if this was steel, it would be glowing bright orange right now. But this is, um, aluminum doesn't behave like steel or, or iron. But uh, heat it up as much you can, as you can. See how the orange aura, where the metal hits, where, where the flame hits the metal, that's the orange yellowish color that you want. that is and you'll see look at this all your black soot is gone okay and it is completely clean alrighty we'll put this in the vise and you know it your your metal doesn't have to be hot after you after you heat it up like this because what's weird is once you, wow, wow, that's warm. And watch your pliers because they will be warm. Very warm. Then, uh, let's see here how you can 
just uh, gently bend it a little bit at a time. But uh, you can uh, bend this at a 90 degree angle, go from top to bottom, try to keep it as uniform as possible. Test it out with one of these. And the device is very hot, so uh, yeah, everything's hot. 90 degree motor mount. And it's not cracked. Look at that, not cracked. I'll let it cool off for a good half hour. And yeah, your pliers will still be extremely hot. Aluminum is a great conductor of heat. Set your pliers on something metal so uh, they can cool down. Don't set them on your bench. <laughs> Don't set this on your wooden bench because it will catch fire. You've got an aluminum motor mount bracket that is very strong. Once this cools, it will uh, anneal itself. Basically, all the molecules will realign and uh, it'll become very hard and you won't be able to bend it. I made one last night and for a good 20 minutes afterwards I was able to bend this quite easily with uh, just my hands and a pair of pliers and now today once it's completely cooled and all the molecules are back uh, realigned I cannot you know I couldn't bend this if I tried I'm, that's a very strong very strong three millimeter or eighth of an inch thick aluminum put it in your vise let it sit for a good half hour because it will be quite warm.